Well, in 2021, the Biden administration changed federal rules that prohibited recipients of Title X funding from providing abortion services in the same facility. Now, this is something we worked very closely with the Trump administration to get put in place. It's called the co-location rule, meaning that if you were getting family planning funding, you could not do abortions in the same facility. Makes sense, right? Because we don't want taxpayers to be involved in having to fund abortion. It's called uh, Reagan first did it, uh, then President Bush had it, Clinton did away with it. And then uh, it came back, actually it didn't come back, uh, until Trump came into to office. Well, last week, a federal court of appeals granted the state of Ohio a preliminary injunction blocking this from Title X recipients, meaning protecting the taxpayers of Ohio. The court agreed that allowing Title X recipients to offer abortion services in the same location amounted to the indirect funding of abortion, as every dollar an abortion provider receives through Title X frees up another dollar that the grantee can use to subsidize abortion. Well, join me now in studio to discuss this injunction is the Ohio Attorney General, Dave Yost. General, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you. It's good to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks to the uh, to the fair city here of uh, or the district here in uh, in D.C. So let's talk about this. This is something you've you you fought for along with some other states, but only Ohio prevailed in this. Explain. Kind of a technical argument uh, relates to something called standing. Uh, Ohio actually was able to show a multi-million dollar drop in the amount of m Title X money we received because of the Biden change in the rule. Um, so while the courts agreed with all of the states on the reading of the law on this matter, uh, the other guys lost on a technicality. What's next? Well, we're waiting to see whether the, the Biden administration could ask for what's called an en banc review. This was a three-judge panel. They could ask for all the Sixth Circuit to weigh in, or they could uh, appeal to the Supreme Court and ask for a certiorari. Any guess as to what they might do? I mean, they seem to be pretty rabid about this. Yes, um, and I have given up trying to figure out yeah. the rationale for their decisions. Right. This speaks to the issue of, uh, of elections, quite frankly, when, I mean, such a sharp contrast with the Trump administration in federal policies and federal funding, in particular, just on this one issue. And I could go into a host of other issues, which you have litigated on protecting the taxpayers of Ohio, but just the abortion issue alone. That's right. And this administration has been just lawless with their use of the executive pen. Me and my colleagues uh, in the various states have been going to court to try to hold him within his constitutional restraints, and we're winning a lot. Yeah, you really but are. Everyone, it's because they are so far out of bounds. But for every case we win, there's three others that you either don't see right. or you don't, you don't win. Elections have consequences. They do. Uh, I want and I'm going to go to that for in a moment, but but I want to go back to the litigation because I, I commend you and the attorneys general of of the different states that in times past it wasn't that I mean it, it had a, a, a very important role at the state level, but you're now providing you're that thin line between the overreach of the federal government and the Constitution. I mean, every time I turn around, the Republican attorneys general are getting together to sue. But that takes a long time, and in many cases, these policies go into effect, and they're in effect until you can get years down the road to actually get before the court. That's right. And the other side is it's a poor weapon that doesn't point both ways. The Trump administration was stymied by lawsuits mm. from uh, right. the, the left, many of which didn't end up going anywhere, but they got that preliminary injunction to begin with and put everything in stasis uh, for years during the Trump administration. Elections have consequences when people say, you know, my, my you know, I, I just don't think my vote counts. I mean, these are the type of policies that happen when good people don't vote. That's exactly right. And we saw a ton of 
conservatives uh, and evangelicals that didn't vote in 2020, didn't vote in some races in 2022. And both of those elections produced results that empowered the progressive left, things that don't remotely uh, reflect a majority position, but because our voters weren't there, um, we lost ground. Well, last time you were on the program, it was prior to the November election in Ohio regarding issue one and the yes. abortion issue there. I mean, but even the turnout in Ohio, I mean, it was 50, 52, 53 percent of voters turned out. But you think about something so significant, that's a lot of people that stayed home. It is a lot of people that stayed home, but at the same time, I think we need to recognize that we have lost the hearts and minds battle. Uh, we, the Supreme Court did a horrible thing in Roe in addition to uh, authorizing abortion as a constitutional right, which is not in the Constitution. They took this out of the hands of the democratic process. Right. And so for 50 years, the only debate that happened was in the courts. Uh, the People in the middle just said, hey, I, I don't want to get involved with that. I don't know what I think. It it's, makes people mad. And the courts decide that. Right. And so little bit by little bit, we saw an exit poll that showed, I, I think it was 57 percent of the people who vote did vote knew somebody that had had an abortion. Right. And among those people, even those that identified as pro-life, they voted the other way. Right. You know, part of that, because the court had it for so long, the electorate became lazy and even thinking through the implications and the moral uh, ramifications of this issue. General Yost, we're out of time. I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks for your leadership and for f fighting the good fight. It's good to see you. Let's make sure we continue to stand. <laughs>